JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 16th until March the 20th. I am Haralam Bospisuro, senior market analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, so although the calendar suggested a, rel a relatively quiet start of the week, that was not the case. Overnight, the RBNZ and the FOMC cut interest rates aggressively by 75 and 100 basis points respectively, while the Bank of Japan doubled the pace of its uh, ETF purchases. Now, as for the rest of the week, we have two more central banks deciding on interest rates, the Norges Bank and the Swiss National Bank. It would be interesting to see how these, these two banks will uh, respond to the coronavirus outbreak. As for the data, we have Australia's employment report and, and Canada's EPIs, which are also uh, coming out. Now, let's start with Monday. Monday appeared to be a relatively light day, as uh, I already noted, in terms of uh, data releases. However, it was not as quiet as the calendar suggested. Overnight, three major central banks decided to ease their policy further outside scheduled meetings in an attempt to safeguard the global economy from the negative effects of the fast spreading coronavirus. The chorus started with the RBNZ, which uh, cut its benchmark rate by 75 basis points to 0.25%. Uh, the FOMC was uh, next uh, with an even bolder action. U.S. policymakers decided to reduce the federal funds rate uh, target by 100 uh, basis points to zero, uh, to zero, to 20, to zero to zero 25 uh, percent. Uh, while later in, uh, in the in the Asian session, the Bank of Japan, although it did not cut rates, pledged to double the pace of its ETF purchases. However, the decisions had only limited success in calming uh, panicked investors. Following, uh, following Friday's uh, rebound in equity markets, Asian bourses traded in the red today as investors' anxiety over the effectiveness of uh, such measures deepened even further. Japan's Nikkei 225 closed 3.10% down, while China Shanghai Composite slid 2.7%. 2.76%. Uh, now, all these uh, developments suggest that investors may now be on the same page as we have been for the last few days. We have been repeatedly noting that uh, rate cuts may not be enough to offset the damage. With fears that the virus is unlikely to be contained soon, we see it hard for consumers and businesses uh, to opt for cheap loans and start uh, spending. Thus, we believe that the worst is not behind us yet and that the economic wounds could, uh, deepen, could deepen and drag well into the second quarter. We repeat once again that with elevated uncertainty on how much more serious all this could get, it would be naive to assume that everything is priced in. Therefore, we would treat uh, any gains in equities as corrective moves before the next, uh, the next leg south. We believe that we believe that there is still room for declines in risk assets as investors may seek once again uh, shelter in uh, safe heavens. Okay, here I have the graphs of uh, the usual graphs of uh, with regards to the coronavirus. You can see that the cases have stayed in acceleration territory uh, for one, two, three, four, five days. Um, remember that anything above uh, zero points to acceleration, while anything below below zero points to a slowdown, while um, while the deaths accelerated sharply on Sunday, although we had a small slowdown on Saturday, you can see that 
uh, most of the days have, have been in, uh, in acceleration mode. So uh, those two graphs suggest that uh, the virus is still spreading at a fast pace and that we're May, we may have not reached uh, the peak yet. Now, data out from China may have also weighed on broader market sentiment. Um, as the large declines in fixed asset, asset investment, industrial production and, and retail sales for February underscore the magnitude of the economic damage the virus's outbreak has already caused to the world's second largest economy. Now, as for the rest of today's data, the only release uh, worth mentioning is the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for March, which is forecast to have fallen to 4.4 uh, from 12.9. Uh, now, let's move on to Tuesday. On Tuesday, we have the UK employment data for January. The unemployment uh, rate is expected to have remained unchanged at 3.8%, uh, uh, while average uh, weekly earnings, including uh, bonuses, are, uh, anticipated, uh, are anticipated to have accelerated to 3% year over year from 2.9%. The excluding bonuses rate is anticipated to have remained unchanged at 3.2%. Now, we don't believe that this set of data will prove so determinant with regards to the Bank of England's future course, future course of action as they refer to a period before the fast spreading of the, coronavirus, of the coronavirus around the globe. On Wednesday, the Bank of England decided to cut interest rates by 50 basis points outside the scheduled gathering, while the UK uh, Chancellor of the Exeger Rishi Sunak announced that the nation will borrow almost 100 billion pounds more in coming years than predicted a few months ago. In our view, the large fiscal loosening lessens the need for the Bank of England to proceed for more rate cuts and with, uh, and with uh, most uh, major central banks expected to continue easing, this may allow the pound uh, to, uh, to strengthen. <clears throat> now, uh, as for uh, from Germany, we get the ZW survey for March. The current conditions uh, index is expected to have slid further into the negative uh, territory, specifically to minus uh, 30 to minus 30 from minus 15.7. This would uh, mark the eighth straight month with a negative sign. The negative sentiment, the economic sentiment index, excuse me, is also expected to, uh, to tumble into negative waters to minus 29 from 8.7 in February. Now, with the coronavirus spreading in the EU at a fast pace, a slump in those indices appears more, more than normal uh, to us. Uh, from uh, the Eurozone as a whole, we get the labor cost index and the wages rate for the fourth quarter. The labor cost index is forecast to have accelerated to 3% from 2.6% in uh, the third quarter, while no forecast is currently avail available for, uh, for the wages rate. Now in the US, we have retail sales, industri industrial production, and manufacturing production data, all for February. Both headline and core sales are expected to have slowed to 0.2% month over month from 0.3, while the industrial and manufacturing production rates are forecast to have returned into positive territory. Namely, the IP rate is expected to have risen to 0.4% month over month from minus 0.3%, while the MP1 is forecast to have increased to 0.3% month over month from minus 0.1%. The JOLTS job openings for January are also coming out and the forecast points to a small decline. Now, on Wednesday, under normal uh, circumstances, light would have fallen uh, on, uh, on the FOMC policy decision. However, as we already noted, the Fed decided to act outside the scheduled, um, scheduled meeting, slashing interest rates by 100 basis points overnight to, tar to a target range of 0 to 0.25% uh, and promising to expand its balance sheet by at least 700 billion US dollars in the coming weeks. 
Now, on March 3rd, the committee decided to cut the federal funds rate by 50 basis points, the first emergency move outside the scheduled meeting since the 2008 financial crisis, and this was in an attempt to safeguard the world's largest economy from the impact of the coronavirus. On top of that, uh, last Thursday, officials decided to offer 1.5 trillion US dollars in short-term loans, and that they will start purchasing a broader range of US treasuries, which means a new round of QE. The latest and much bolder cut, the one we got over night makers, believe that the Fed is done cutting rates as US, of, as US officials are not in favor of negative rates. Even Chair Powell noted uh, following the, the bold cut that he does not think negative rates in the US are appropriate and that the committee will not proceed with this week's scheduled meeting. So in other words, following the aggressive action uh, from the Fed overnight, we will not have the planned, the scheduled meeting uh, decision on Wednesday. Now, as uh, for Wednesday's uh, data, during the early Asian morning, uh, New Zealand's current account balance for the fourth quarter is coming out and the forecast points to a narrowing deficit. Japan's tra trade data are also due to be released with the nation's deficit expected to have turned into surplus. Uh, during the European day, we get Eurozone's final CPIs for February and as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, namely that the headline rate slid to 1.2% year over year from 1.4% while the core rate ticked up to 1.2% from 1.1%. From the US, we get building permits and housing starts for February, with the forecast suggesting um, with the forecasts suggesting small declines. While from Canada, we have uh, the CPIs for February. The headline CPI is anticipated to have slowed to 2.1 year over year from 2.4 uh, percent, while uh, no forecast is available for the core rate which stood at 1.8% uh, year over year in January. Now, under normal circumstances, it, this would have allowed Bank of Canada policymakers to stay away from the cut button. But bearing in mind that central banks are now acting to support the wounded global economy that is uh, hit by the effects of the coronavirus outbreak, we cannot rule out another bolt action by the Bank of Canada perhaps outside the scheduled meeting uh, as well. Now, moving to Thursday. On Thursday, during the Asian morning, it was a turn of the Bank of Japan to decide on monetary policy, but this bank proceeded with a decision early, uh, early today as well. Uh, Japanese officials maintained the short-term policy rate at uh, minus 0.10%, the target of the 10-year uh, government bond yields at around 0%. Now, with little ammunition in terms of rate cuts, the bank just proceeded by increasing its annual pace of ETF purchases to 12 trillion yens from uh, 6 uh, trillion yens previously. Now, as for our view, we see it very hard for business sentiment to rebound just because the Bank of Japan pledged to purchase uh, more ETFs compared with the cuts we got from other central banks, this is a much softer move and may, and may not have the desired effects. We expect the yen to continue attracting heaven flows as we don't believe that equities have uh, hit the bottom yet. With the virus still spreading fast and with no, and with no vaccine on the horizon, uncertainty over whether it could uh, indeed be contained may weigh further on investors' morale, prompting them prompting them to reduce even further their risk exposure. In other words, I believe that uh, equities have not bottomed out yet. I believe that there is room for more declines. This will weigh on risk-linked uh, currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi and will benefit the safe havens, yen and Swiss franc. Oil prices are also uh, are, could also come under renewed uh, selling uh, interest something that may weigh on oil-related currencies also, which are the Canadian dollar and the Norwegian crown. Now, later in the day, during the European session, the central bank torch will be passed to the Norges Bank. So we have a Norges Bank meeting on Thursday and the SNB, the Swiss National Bank. 
when they last met, uh, Norwegian policymakers kept interest rates unchanged at 1.5 percent and noted that the policy rate will remain at the present level in the coming in the coming period. However, last week inflation data disappointed largely with the headline rate tumbling to 0.9 percent the year over year from 1.8 uh, percent and uh, the core rate sliding to 2.1 percent from 2.9. Now, with central banks worldwide easing their respective policies in order to prevent a global recession due to the effects of the coronavirus, a slump in, uh, in uh, Norwegian inflation may come as an extra reason for policymakers to follow the footsteps of the RBA, the FOMC, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, and the RBNZ, especially after the sharp tumble in uh, oil prices uh, uh, last Monday. Now, passing the ball to the Swiss uh, National uh, to the Swiss National Bank. This may be the only central bank which is unlikely to ease this week. Having the lowest interest rate globally at minus 0.75, the bank may prefer to fight the virus crisis by intervening in the FX market in order to prevent the franc from keep strengthening, especially with the currency attracting heaven flows recently. Another reason we don't expect the SNB to touch interest rates is because the ECB refrained from doing so. So the bank may just adopt a more dovish language and strengthen its intervention uh, signals. Now, as for Thursday's data, and during the Asian morning, Japan releases its uh, national CPS for February. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have held steady at 0.8%. Uh, that said, with both the Tokyo CPI's, CPI rates uh, for the month sliding, we believe that the national rates will uh, follow suit. From Australia, we get uh, the employment report for February. The employment rate is expected to have uh, stayed unchanged at 5.3%, uh, well above the 4.5% threshold, which the RBA believes it will start generating inflationary pressures. While the, while the employment change is forecast to show that the economy has gained less jobs than it did in January. Specifically, it is expected to reveal 10K uh, new jobs down from the 13.5K print in, uh, in January. At uh, their latest meeting, RBA officials decided to cut interest rates by 25 basis points to a new record low of 0.5% with uh, Governor uh, Philip Lowe saying in the post-meeting statement that the coronavirus was having a significant impact on the domestic economy and that it's hard to assess uh, how large the effects will be. In the statement, it was also repeated that officials remain prepared to ease monetary policy further to support the Australian economy. Now, according to the, AS, to the ASX 30-day interbank cash uh, rate uh, futures yield, yield curve, the one I have here, there is a 92% probability for officials to push the cut button again at the April uh, meeting. And perhaps a soft deployment report uh, could just uh, seal the deal. Now from uh, New Zealand, we get the GDP for uh, the fourth quarter. The forecast is for the quarter over quarter rate to have uh, to have declined to 0.5% from 0.7%, but this will drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 2.4% from 2.3%. With all other major central banks easing their policy in order to safeguard the global economy from the coronavirus crisis, the RBNZ was no, except, was no exception, kick-starting the overnight easing chorus with an emergency 75 basis points uh, rate reduction noting that the economic outlook has deteriorated significantly. Officials also added that the rate will stay at 0.25% at least for 12 months, meaning that there are, there are no more cuts on the horizon. That said, officials agreed that, they, that should further stimulus be required, a large-scale uh, asset purchase program would be preferable. With all that in mind, we don't believe that data referring to a period uh, before the virus outbreak would alter uh, officials' view and thus uh, they may not prove for the market mover they usually are. We prefer to wait for data concerning the first quarter of, um, of 2020 
as uh, as these numbers may prove uh, determinant over whether the RBNZ will proceed with um, with QE. Now, as for the rest of the day, the only release worth mentioning uh, is the U.S. Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, which is expected to have declined to 10 from 36.7. Now, finally, on Friday, uh, Japanese markets will be closed due to the vernal equinox holiday, while from Canada we get retail sales for uh, January, and from the U.S. we have the existing home sales for February. Canada's uh, headline sales are expected to have risen 0.4% month over month after stagnating in December, while the core uh, rate is expected to have declined to 0.2% from 0.5%. The U.S. existing home sales are forecast to have rebounded 0.8% month over month after sliding 1.3% month over month in uh, January. So that's it uh, for me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next Monday. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT time. So, goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.